God wants us to remember happiness isn't having fun. It's deeper. There's always hope. There's always love. And there's more than just here. Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a podcast pointing you towards God in everything you are and everything you do. I'm Lindy Wynn, and I'm blessed to be here with you. Hello, and welcome to Mamas in Spirit. It is such a treat to have all our listeners here with us for this gathering today. I am here with the beautiful and joy-filled Marsha Burt. Marsha, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here and a joy to be here. I can't wait to hear what comes out. Well, Marsha is incredibly fun, so I know we're going to have a great time as we talk today about discovering God, about discovering God initially in our lives, that first encounter, that first coming to know that God is real and that God is with us, and then also the continuous encounter or discovering God throughout all of our lifetimes. And the great beauty in that, that God is omnipresent and God is with us every day. God is always present to us and it's up to us to choose to open our hearts and our minds and our lives to experience the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So a very beautiful topic to talk about today. And as with everything, let us begin in prayer. Dearest God, thank you so much for bringing us all together for this gathering of Mamas in Spirit today. And we just ask your holy hand upon each one of us, wherever we are in our lives right now, that we open our minds and our hearts and our beings to encounter and to rediscover you time and time again. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so Marsha, I am blessed to know all about you and your passion for Snoopy. (laughs) (laughs) Marsh is one of the only adults I know, which I love, that will wear matching Snoopy watch and shoes. <laughs> now they're going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> We're so. all crazy for God, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about you? Sure. I've been married for 34 years to my husband, Don. We have two daughters, Madeline, who's 29, and Olivia, who's 27. And I was blessed to always be able to kind of be home with them after school, all throughout their school years, but was able to kind of work in just like offices along the way. And so I still work in an office, nothing too exciting, but I've always appreciated my coworkers and and the experiences with them. And I've learned a lot through bringing my beliefs and just being true and real in front of them. And, And we've always had great experiences. So that even though it's not a big career, it's always been a good, nice, beautiful part of my life. And then I also am, and I, like I told Lindy, I don't know if I wanted to share this, but we are a deacon couple. My husband is a deacon, which totally blessed us and me. And it really is a huge part of my encounter with God, obviously. So I feel like even though um, not everyone gets to have this blessing, I feel like I really needed it to kind of catch up with all these other people of faith that I know and love and that have always inspired me. So, so yeah, that's why I'm sharing that today. Yes. And thank (laughs) you for sharing that because a lot of people might not know, and I didn't know before either that within the context of the Catholic Christian church, that when someone goes through the diaconate formation, and then if you are married to someone who's going through that, you go through that too. And it's really an intensive formation over years, Mm -hmm. including retreats and other means to experience that spiritual formation. Yes. I mean, for me, it was intense. We had presentations, we had research, but it was beautiful. And I would never, it was beautiful to go through it with my husband because I feel like we grew together more in our faith. And if the wife didn't get to do all that, you know, the husband would be growing more and we wouldn't be on the same level. And to our marriage just really grew so much stronger because our faith grew stronger. If your love for God is strong, then your love for each other grows too. So it was beautiful. It really was. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. That's really beautiful. And it's kind of forced you into a lot of pauses and a lot of stillness and contemplation that you otherwise wouldn't have experienced. Yes. Which I'm the type of person that really needs to be 
kind of pushed along. So <laughs> pushed into stillness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and pushed to step out a little bit out of my comfort zone. So you mean like doing this podcast? Yes. <laughs> Maybe like doing that. A perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Yep. And I have to point out that I love when I get to see Marsha after church across the way and I get to say, children, there's the deaconess. <laughs> Yeah. And then we call out to you. Oh, it so brings me great joy. That's sweet. <laughs> so it's really lovely for me because Marsha and I both share a piece of our story in common in the sense that we discovered God as children, but not through formalized religion. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. So I am not a cradle Catholic and I have married a cradle Catholic and I know so many people and that's kind of what I strive as the perfect journey with God, but it didn't start out that way, but somehow I came around to it anyway. <laughs> so I didn't go to church ever, really. I actually went once in a while with two of my little best friends that I grew up with. Their families always went to church. Their families always prayed at dinner time, but it was not the norm in my house. So that's how it started. But loving, loving house and everything was fine. Um, but unfortunately, my dad passed away very unexpectedly when I was 11. And so that was hard and really changed the, my family dynamic. My sisters were pretty much already out of the house. And it was just my mother and I. And she was a young woman still and really just kind of didn't handle it well. She started drinking and really just continued that, pretty much jumped right into another marriage because she just couldn't be alone. And so it was very hard for me. And this is where if I had maybe God, if I knew God really well, or as a child's heart is so pure, if I knew him, I'm sure... I would have, I would assume do better. I don't know. But how I have kind of came, and this is where Lindy and I have a, like a little connection. She used to go to a little levee at her house. You read my blog. I do. <laughs> and, and it was like spiritual to her. And so I, my little spiritual place was my dad's grave because it's a beautiful little tiny old fashioned cemetery in Connecticut trees and a pond and it's gorgeous it's like a park but there <laughs> my dad was there mm -hmm. so I would ride my bike over there all the time and just relax and just sit and watch the trees and the wind and you know, nature and and we all know you know God is all through that and I remember at night you know where most kids would say their prayers to God and go to sleep I would always talk to my dad and that was like a thing and and I even I remember it just popped into my head recently that like I would ask him for things. I would ask my dad, like, help me with this. Kind of like every kid would be doing, help me, God. Um, and and so I had that. And now I know it really, I was talking to God and, you know, through my dad and stuff. So that's like my first encounter. Those are my first memories of needing and searching and just finding more of a earthly help, I guess. Yes. It sounds like things were pretty despairing at home. It was. Yeah. yeah very difficult. Were. Yeah, it was. I was 11, like 11 to 15. That was, that's pretty much what happened for those years, which of course, if, if your mom's out there or if your brother's sister's dad's, whatever, you know that that's a hard time already to kind of struggle through. So I was not doing well. And I think <laughs> now I believe, I totally believe that God was with me, even though I didn't really recognize it yet. And I totally believe that God was like, no, she's not doing well. So she really needs some help, like right in her face. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I totally believe he sent my lifelong partner to me at age 15, which is usually very young, yeah, that is, <laughs> young that and is. crazy. And I mean, it's not like I knew it at the time, but when I met him and started to know his family. He went to church every week, which I thought was really unusual. And his mom was amazing. His dad was amazing, his whole family. So that's how I really first encountered God and church sure. and community and all that. And it sounds like you've been sharing about three chapters of yeah. the book of your life story so far. <laughs> yeah. Your early childhood mm -hmm. until you were 11 mm -hmm. and your dad passed away. 
-hmm. And then that 11 through 15, where you started really encountering God from what I'm hearing from you and being sustained by God through these experiences with your dad in a spiritual Mm -hmm. sense after he passed away. Yeah. Yeah. And then this whole new chapter you're now touching upon Mm -hmm. after that initial breaking open, when your dad passed away, a very significant moment in your life coming to know God even though you may not have completely articulated it that way yet. Mm -hmm. And then at 15 here, you're starting to encounter God one through a specific person, Don and people, his parents. And then also the church, Mm -hmm. my understanding theologically are the people, right? It is the people, the Mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. So then you started going to church with them. Yes. And then you started... Well, with him. He didn't really go with his parents. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Him and his cousins, all his cousins and his brother. I mean, they were... That's pretty sweet. A bunch of teenagers going to church together and bringing you along as his girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. It was. It was. And it was all new to me. And really, yeah, I I remember like my eyes are opening real wide right now. I'm like, it was a huge, beautiful church of which I later got married in. And... I just was like taking it all in really, truly felt like I was making up for all the years. I didn't have it. I was like, yes, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. It was like finding the answer for what you've been searching for. Yes. As you know, a young teenager. So still I wasn't grasping at all, but I was getting stuff that I, you knew something at at the soul level, right? You were being fed and nourished definitely, and you wanted to take it all in like a sponge. Right. And I saw these experiences of these people and how they lived their life and how sweet and kind they were just beautiful people. So I was like, yeah, this is, this must be good. This must be, (laughs) this must be what it should be like. What I'm hearing from you is that you started having some very deep experiences of love. Right. And encounters with love. Yes. That probably I hadn't felt for a while. I mean, I always knew my mom loved me, but... They were hard years, hard, hard years. I knew my sisters loved me. I had really good friends. My two friends that I spoke about, those parents were so sweet to me. But still, you always can use more love. And and this was just filling up me more than I've ever been filled before that. Yes. I'm thinking of a quote from Father John Meyer's (laughs) podcast on opening your heart to the Holy Spirit. And he said something about how arguably... A mother's love may be the most important Mm -hmm. source of love. Oh, Lindy. Yes, you're right. (laughs) I mean, and, and that reminds me, that's why I'm like a crazy mom. I've always been just so wanting to be different and loving and just like a really good mom because I really kind of didn't have a good mom because she was incapable in her mind at that point. So I've always had those kind of things to grapple with as a mom. Thank you for sharing that because I can only imagine how many listeners that may resonate with Mm -hmm. right in this moment as they're listening. Yeah. Because that's a reality in life. And that's why it's also so beautiful how profound God is and that God can love us and does love us Mm -hmm. through so many ways. Yes. And so many people, we open our hearts to that Mm -hmm. and also place ourselves in situations where we can be loved. Right. Yes. And so I find it incredibly beautiful. I find it so touching that you met Don and that his parents were such a reflection of God's love to you. And I know that it's carried you and created a very firm foundation or cornerstone for your life that's deeply rooted in God. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. They were amazing. And the funny thing is, is like my mother-in-law was so wonderful that she, she and my mother became like best friends too. So she was just open to anyone. You didn't have to be going to church and perfect. She was my example of someone who really looked for the people that were kind of shunned and and broken and everything and just be a loving person for them and help that person. I know my mother really appreciated and treasured her 
friendship and love with my mother-in-law. And that was beautiful to see throughout the years. It was all a, a growing and throughout the years. But honestly, instantly, my, my mother-in-law loved my mom, which, which I thought was kind of crazy. <laughs> but because <laughs> at the time, I was still really struggling with her. I did come around and... Yeah, I want to talk about that too. And just mention for a moment, I feel a little emotional listening to you share that about your mother-in-law because I think it's such a reminder to each one of us how profound our example can be when we genuinely allow God to purify our hearts and love each person where they're at and be a Mm -hmm. reflection of God's love and God's face definitely to that human being. Mm -hmm. And I, I love how you mentioned the people that are on the outskirts. Yeah. And that's so critical. I mean, if we touch upon nothing else today on this podcast, that's so, that's so critical. It's so difficult to be shunned or broken. And even when people are really broken, oftentimes they know that. Right. And they know they're causing other people harm, which probably compounds the whole thing. Yeah. So for someone to be that unconditionally loving, and it makes sense to me if it couldn't be you, you're her daughter, that mm-hmm. makes sense. But for your mother-in-law, mm-hmm. she was a step removed and deeply grounded in her own family system. So she could be that to her. Right. Yes. That's beautiful. I'm just and reflecting in, what you said. Well, and well, <laughs> that's why I love spiritual direction. Why I love it too. You get to kind of hear it a different way. And what I want to add is that because my mother-in-law was that person for anyone, when you have a person that is loving you, no matter how broken you are, it makes you kind of blossom a little bit and move out of the despair and anything that you're going through, it kind of just gives you a new hope, a new joy, a diversion or whatever, maybe even, but she did help my mom so much. When you just reach out to someone, I remember my own experience when, when people reach out to me, you just feel like a weight has been lifted off of you and you do feel the love of God. Yeah. And God is love and that's an encounter with love. Yes. So beautiful. It is. And I know that over time, because Marsha and I have chatted some, that not only do each of us in our own lives have kind of an initial discovery of God, I mean that deeply personal encounter with God, like when a teenager is forced on a retreat (laughs) and then they have a real encounter with God and they're Mm -hmm. like transformed because they've discovered God in that relationship, that dynamic interplay and relationship with God and that they are that loved, that Mm -hmm. they are that profoundly. And like you were talking about unconditionally loved. Mm -hmm. So there's that initial experience of that yet. We're still human and we still need God all the time to refuel and refill and to get nourished. And then also to guide us and to help us navigate and to purify us Mm -hmm. because we're so human. We need our hearts to be regularly purified so that hopefully we can be more like God. Mm -hmm. And I know for you and your experience, there was some real movement there for you and your relationship with your mom. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was. After we got married and we had kids, one of the major things looking back that kind of opened my heart and turned my heart was a prayer group of, of which is called Moms in Prayer. And I started it when Madeline was like in first grade. So it's been a million, many years. And uh, <laughs> and that is where I really started to hear, you know, we were with other moms. We were praying for our children. And I knew how I felt about my children. But I just saw the whole dynamic of a mother. Like, it's so complex. Um, you know, I I truly forgave and understood where my mother was coming from more. And yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it. Just praying for my own children and understanding what it is to be a mom, that helped me forgive my mom and let all that go. And just really know truly in my heart that she really was trying her best. And that's all we can ask for. And, and I know she truly loved me. And so that helped immensely. And so thankfully, because she has passed away now and we were really estranged for a while. I mean, I always visited her. She always saw grandchildren and all that kind of thing, but it was always just a hard visit. And thankfully, probably about five or seven years before she passed, we became good. And, 
And then when she did pass away was, <laughs> you know, a profound, like, unbelievable encounter with God that I will never forget. And I know you want me to tell the story of that a little bit. <laughs> so she had been ill for a long time, but then she had some complications. And I also just kind of remembered recently, the other type of encounter with God through this was timing. Like we always are worried about God's timing. We're always anxious about God's timing and everything. So she lived in Florida. And like I said, she was really sick and my two sisters were there. So she had them. And the whole thing was, I was trying to figure out when to visit her. Like when is the best time to visit her? She was actually in a a rehab center. We all agreed it was probably better for me to wait until she got home. But then complications, complications, she wasn't getting home. I really was praying really hard, like really turning to God to see when the best time was to go. Because, you know, we didn't have a lot of money to go back and forth and everything. You know, with kids and everything, it's just all those schedules. It was hard. Again, probably something in my mind I should have just let go. But I did ultimately go at the absolute perfect time. I was scheduled to go for like a two-week period, and she was not doing well, and we all went to a doctor appointment, of which my sisters have always been taking care of all these doctor appointments, but for some reason, I went in there like guns blazing. He wanted to do another surgery. I'm like, no, she's not up to it. She's not up to another surgery. We are taking her back to the rehab center. We had angels at the rehab center that put her on hospice immediately, which At the time, I didn't know how complicated it is. Much paperwork and many things that have to be done. And she was home like in 24 hours, which was a miracle. And just the relief of her just getting home because her home was always her happy place, oasis. She always loved being at home. And so that was probably like a week into it. And she was kind of re-doing stuff in her house. That's another thing she loved to do was always have it all perfect. So she was changing a few things that we were running around doing for her. And just we were enjoying everything. And we were getting to know hospice and all of how that works. And six days later, she passed away. But the, like the night before she passed away, I was with her and just kind of comforting her. She had, you know, we'll not go into what she was physically doing, but she was in pain. And so I was trying to comfort her. And we were just really quiet. It was just me and her. It was late and it was just really quiet. And we were, I don't think I was praying because I don't, honestly, I don't think I ever prayed in front of her, but we were quiet. And so I know in my, my mind, I was praying and never, never, ever felt God like sitting next to me. And he was sitting next to me and she fell asleep And I remember going in the like back bedroom to call Don and try to explain what just happened to me. And it was just so comforting and amazing because I knew, you know, she was not going to be around for too much longer. And just to know that he came with her with all the times that I didn't feel God through her or with her. It was just amazing to look back We have such luxury of looking back on really big moments of your life and really kind of saying, yeah, and remember, like, we didn't even talk to each other. We were at odds with each other. And now this is my biggest experience besides looking into my baby's eyes when they were born and loving them. That was a huge encounter. And just thanking God I was with her. So the timing of it all, I mean, I'm a big, I always see humor and stuff. I love God's humor. And so I was like, yes, God, you were perfect in, you know, getting me there right when I needed to get there. And then afterwards, just being with my sisters who really did say verbally, tell me like, we're so glad you're here. Cause we actually, the four of us, my two sisters, my nephew and I went to church Sunday. We went to church. I don't think they had been to church since I dragged them in there for my wedding. So <laughs> it was many years and that was really another profound experience. And they, they said that I helped them they're so much older than me. They were always kind of like my second moms, but somehow I helped them through that time. Mm. So it was beautiful. It really was. Thank you for sharing that. That is such a beautiful moment from your life. And I love how you compared that moment synonymously with the moments that you would look into your baby's eyes because It shows and demonstrates how we encounter God through both the joy-filled 
beauty of mm-hmm. experience, like having a baby and holding your baby and looking in your baby's eyes all the way to having this very tumultuous and difficult relationship with your mom. Mm-hmm. But from, it's like the beauty from the ashes yeah. saying, yep. it's like from all of that tumult and difficulty and pain over many years. And even when you were a child and very vulnerable, very difficult, that here you had this profound encounter Mm -hmm. with God. Yeah. That's a good reminder. I think for all of us, Mm -hmm. it's a good reminder. Yeah. A reminder to like here, I know, you know, I knew my mom was dying, but I just still felt like such a hope and love through that time. And we all go through difficult times. And I think one of the things that God wants us to remember, happiness isn't having fun. It's deeper. And so deeply I felt okay, even though I was about to lose my mom. I just deeply knew that there's always hope. There's always love. And there's more than just here. Does that make sense? It totally know. does. <laughs> and it's so beautiful. So Yes. Yeah. It was amazing. And then one of the other things that I grew from that, and I actually was a hospice volunteer for a really long time after that, which was so not like me. You don't know. <laughs> and somehow I, I just felt a calling to like end stage life because it was a beautiful experience for me. And I know it's kind of weird to say, but I kind of talked with nurses and other like hospice people that it is like a really beautiful time of life. Like we were with Carolyn at the end of her life and they're just, I mean, Carolyn was always amazingly spiritual, but you get like a really closeness to like the next life with them because they're really aware. And even my mother was, sometimes they start talking kind of strangely about things, but I truly think they're like seeing what's to come or or they know things that we don't know. So it's it's interesting. And I saw that with a lot of hospice patients that I just sat with. My point is like, I can't do anything. As a hospice volunteer, you can't administer medicine. You really can't do anything besides sit and just be with them and talk to them or read to them or whatever they want to do or just have a conversation with them. So you can't do much, but it's a really an, an amazing journey with someone. So that really changed my life too, because it really pulled me out of the norm. And it kind of snowballed into really being open to helping in bereavement at church and that kind of thing. Some people, I know it's just not their thing. They don't want to be a part of that. But I really feel called to that part. And it's all stems from that because I never knew anyone in hospice before. And I didn't really know how it worked. But I just knew as a family how it was for us that just need help. You need someone to come in and let the person go out and just go out and walk down the street for 20 minutes or something if they're home with their loved one. But it was really gave me a new sense of, wow, I can really do things that I didn't think I could do. And obviously growing in my faith, knowing that it's really not me, it's God's helping me to do these things. So that's how I, as I look back, I can see how God was just like with me all the time. I could feel him all the time and just moving on Mm -hmm. as I got older. Yeah. Well, and talking about the hospice, It's interesting because I think it touches upon that sometimes the things that we fear most or try to stay away from the most because they seem like they'd be so intimidating or overwhelming or scary or whatnot, therein lies profound encounters with God. It sounds like that's what you had. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marsha. This is so (laughs) touching. And in closing, is there anything, I know you have your two beautiful daughters out in the world, and (laughs) is there anything for our listeners that you would want to just share to encourage them to be open to discovering and rediscovering God Mm -hmm. time and time again? I would just say, just remember that everyone's journey is so unique to them. And so like if they aren't 
born into a family that is praying and going to church. It doesn't matter. It comes in God's timing. God is there. I just pray that everyone knows that God is with them, even in the darkest and hardest times that they don't feel alone and that he can help you do anything. And I pray for people to just step out and just just be quiet to hear him and hear where he wants people to go. If you do have a strong and a good relationship with God, if you don't have a relationship with God, just kind of think back like I've done and just kind of go over your life and see how things play out and kind of tend to see how did that happen? It sure wasn't me and just to be open. And then again, once you know how much God loves you and you love yourself, then you just reach out to others and to help others. So to receive that love and then to share it, yeah. reflect it back yeah. into the world. Yeah. Thank you, Marcia. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Always my treat. Let us take a moment to close in prayer. Would you like to lead us or would you like me sure. to? Sure. I will pray. Dear Lord, we are just so grateful to have you know us. Every hair on our head, just know us all so uniquely and have a plan for us all so perfectly. I just pray for all the women and, and men to just know you and listen to you and just be open to what you have for them in their lives and allow them to just have the time to see and not be scared or anxious or fearful of what you have. Just be bold and, and just grab the journey that he wants you to have. And we just thank you for Lindy so much. There are just so many special people in the world that are just your light no matter what. And you just have to kind of be in their presence and you, your demeanor changes. So I pray for everyone out there to find someone like that too, to help them along. So we journey together. And we ask this all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marcia. This has been such a meaningful conversation today about discovering God and rediscovering God throughout all of our lives. And so thank you to everyone for being here with us today. Know that we are praying for you and holding you close in our hearts. And remember, you can always go to mamasandspirit.com for the Dear Mama blog and really take advantage of those reflection questions, a scripture passage to pray with, and the invitation to grow in daily life. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always.